Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play Downtown Farmer's Market. It's ages seven and up, two to four players, and it takes 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to get the most points. You get points by placing out food tiles that meet the goals of your uh, columns and rows that you've selected. Each player at the beginning of the game, this is a two player game we have set up here, but to begin, each player is first given four of these tiles and they get to look at both sides and decide which ones they want to go for. The numbers in white are the higher value numbers. Uh, the numbers with the black background are the lower value numbers. Those should be easier goals in theory to go for. And first you do the top and after you've these placed, then you're given another four tiles after that. And you look at both sides, decide what you want to go for. It might depend on what you have over here and place them out in whatever order you like. Once everybody has done that, you're ready to begin to play. The person who most recently went to a farmer's market gets to go first. They are given this tile and the rest of these goal tiles are put off to the side. You don't need them for this round. And you're going to place the market tiles with the food, you make a row of five. It doesn't matter how many people you're playing with. You start out with five. Uh, we have a, it's a cheesy time right now, apparently. And uh, the players, whoever's the first player gets to pick any one of these tiles to go to, to select on their turn. And they're going to try to fulfill the different goals. Uh, I'm going to show you really quick on, I made sure this person had all seven types of challenges um, on the different wood crates they selected for their goal cards. Um, for these, uh, they need uh, that number of each of these items in this row. And it's okay if there are extra items, like so they could have, uh, select this and put it here. And it's okay that there's a cheese, but there just has to be exactly four of each of these in this one in order for them to score. In this one, they need to have exactly none of any of these items represented in this entire row in order to score the eight points below. Here, they would need to have seven of the same item and they can pick whatever they want. There's a lot of cheese here. Maybe that's what they go for instead. Uh, and so if they place this here and then had, over the course of the game, had another five, so that's a total of five, six, seven, then they would score the points for that row. This has ended up being what happened here for the um, the end of their game when the whole thing was filled in. Uh, here, you just need to have exactly seven items in this row. So uh, if they had these here, two, four, they would need to have this one and then another uh, market item that just had two items here, and then they'd have it exactly seven and score for that. Here, you need to have each of the six ingredients must be present at least once in this line in order to score the points for this. Uh, and here, as long as there are more milk than there are of other uh, market items here, then you would score the points for this. And then finally, this one, you just, whatever the item is pictured, you score the number of points per item on here. And sometimes it's two items that you can score per. It could be for bread and eggs. If you have that, um, that might score per each of those you have. So that's pretty clear as well. So that's all you're trying to do the game. Make, make the goals fit, but you've got to match the goals from here with the goals going across and maximize what you're doing. So we'll go ahead and have this person picks these for right here. Uh, and then in a two player game, this player now gets to pick another one of these cards to discard. And it doesn't matter as much now, but later on in the game, you can see what the other person is perhaps going for. And that's what you're going to discard. They're going to go ahead and we'll just have them pick this one to discard. Then it's this person's turn. They get to pick one. Uh, they'll go ahead and pick this. And then they still get to pick one to discard. They discard another one. And then you fill in the row. In a uh, three-player game, the first player who gets to go plays one and discards one, and then the other two people select one of the um, market items. 
in a four player game, nobody's discarding anything. You just are each selecting one tile and then refilling. So that's all the difference there is with different player counts. So for the next round, this moves to the next player. Uh, you move it clockwise if it's uh, more, if it's three or four players, and then this person gets to go first. So we'll go ahead and have them, uh, we'll just have them take this, and they are going to um, choose when to discard. They know they want cheese, so I guess they'll just discard a cheese. And uh, nothing gets refilled until the end of the round. It's this player's turn, and haha, -ha, there's still a cheese, so they're still going to take it. They pick one to discard, and you keep on going and until your entire 4x4 grid is filled. You can fill any spot of the grid you like on any turn. You don't have to build on a single row or column, and uh, once they are placed, you cannot move them. This is what the end of a game might look like. At this point, each player looks at each of their rows and columns and see if, sees if they have met the criteria, and you get the points from any of the boxes that you have met the criteria for. So this one, do they have all six uh, ingredients up here? They have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, they would get the points for that. They do have more, uh, they do not have more milk cartons than uh, other items here. It is equal, so they would not get the points for that. Here they get one point for bread, so they get another four points for the bread. They do have three milks here, so they get the points for that. Uh, they do not have uh, four milk and four eggs, so no points for that. But here they did meet that criteria. There aren't any of these three items in this entire row. Here they have more than seven items, so they uh, seven. They do not have seven of the same item. In this row, they only got five cheese, so they would not score the points for that. And for here, they have many more than seven items, so they wouldn't get the points for that. But you just tally up your score, compare it against the other player, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's how to play Downtown Farmer's Market. The target demographic for this game is it is a family level game, but with some really good strategy involved. The rule complexity is easy, uh, but there's really engaging gameplay, which is my favorite, where you just start people playing, they get the basics of it, but you have really interesting decisions to make every time it's your turn. Uh, how competitive is this game? It's medium, it varies depending on your player count. With four players, it, it isn't like you're doing a lot of uh, things to mess with the other people that you're playing with, but at two players, you're mostly looking over at their board um, after your turn and trying to discard a tile that they would want. So there's just know that going in and uh, proceed accordingly. The replay value is high for this game. Uh, Whenever we play, it's just so easy to say one more time, one more game, and it's exciting to show off to people. This is one of my husband's and my uh, new go-to games to play, just the two of us in the evening, but we were having a great time playing it over the holidays with uh, my parents as well. We haven't had the play kids play it yet, but it's a pretty easy shoe-in for them once we introduce it to them as well. So uh, it it gets a lot of play, and uh, it's it's pretty impressive how simple it is, but how much is going on when you play the game. Similar games, if you like this one, Point Salad is very popular and it's very similar. Uh, however, it has quite a bit more setup. So as long as you're okay with that, it's a really great game. It's a little bit different in gameplay, but you do have to shuffle all the cards and then pick out specific number of cards for each color, every single hand you play. So if you're okay with that, it is very good. Uh, and then Bag of Chips is another game kind of of this style in which you're trying to set your own goals and see if you can make uh, the cards, uh, the what you draw, match that. And it's really, it has fun novelty factor. It's in a bag instead of like a box. Uh, so it's like a bag of chips. But we have been so pleased with Downtown Farmer's Market. It's getting a ton of play at our house. So you should check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.